Hello, this is Mayuko and Tohu. In today's video, we would like to focus on the poverty among Japanese university students during COVID-19 pandemic. In the beginning of 2020, due to the sudden spread of coronavirus, our lives have drastically changed. Many Japanese university students have been facing financial hardships after losing their income. As university students, we felt that this is an alarming issue that we all have to be aware of. We hope that through our video, you can get a brief insight into this issue of student poverty. Enjoy! Enjoy. In the beginning of 2020, an outbreak of an unidentified virus in Wuhan City, China, sparked a conversation around the world. The virus was soon discovered to be a coronavirus, a contagious and at times deadly virus. Soon after the spread in China, on March 11th, World Health Organization officially announced the beginning of a global pandemic. The world was all of a sudden in chaos. Many countries were in lockdowns, and we all had to live with the fear of contracting the virus while adapting to a completely new lifestyle. Daily essentials were sold out of supermarkets, an overpopulated city like Tokyo becoming a ghost town, and schools and work moving online. This pandemic took a toll on many people's everyday lives, and one of the serious consequences of this pandemic is increasing and intensifying financial problems amongst Japanese university students. As vulnerable young adults, poverty caused by the pandemic has had immense effects on their daily lives and decisions for their future. How exactly did their lives change? Let's take a look at Irina's story. This is Irina, who is in the third year of a university located in Tokyo. She has been taking university lectures online due to the spread of COVID-19. Irina used to run three part-time jobs before the pandemic in order to cover her tuition fee and living expenses. On a weekly basis, Erna worked a total of 42 hours, which earned her an average of 195,000 yen per month. With 100,000 spent on tuition savings and 80,000 spent on living expenses, Erna managed to save 15,000 yen of margin. However, the wages in food service and other service industries started to fall after the outbreak of COVID-19, putting Erna into a financial struggle. Her workplaces cut down their hourly income along with work hours. One place even let Erina go off her position due to a temporary halt to its business. Eventually, Erina was working 28 hours a week in total, which earned her only 110,000 yen per month. Erina started to eat less in order to save her average living expenses. Most of her savings were spent on electronic devices and equipment for her online classes. Despite the financial struggle, Erna decided to continue her study, which put her under emotional distress. Erna's parents began to partially support her financial situation, but with 60,000 spent on average living expenses, 50,000 would only cover half of Erna's tuition fee. This is the reality of many university students in Japan. Ever since the outbreak of COVID-19, many university students have lost financial stability over economic fluctuation and constant changes in policies responding to the pandemic. In the spring of 2020, an online survey was conducted subjecting 500 university students in Japan, of which 60% has suffered an income loss, and 40% has witnessed their financial supporters going through economic losses. This was mainly due to the state of emergency that was declared by the government, asking businesses to temporarily shut down their operations and refraining people from making unnecessary outings. In the summer of 2020, a labor force survey revealed that the number of student part-time workers has dropped drastically. This decline was bigger in scale than what occurred in 2008 after the global financial crisis or in 2011 when the earthquake of the northeastern region of Tohoku took place, showing the severity of the impact that the pandemic has caused in the Japanese economy. By the first quarter of 2021, the number of employed students dropped by 170,000 students from the previous year. The unemployment was mainly concentrated in the 15 to 24 year olds and the number of students who recognized one's own economic situation as financially troubled rose by 2.7 times compared with the pre-COVID era. 
lack of job opportunities and financial assistance has also led some students to face mental health issues. Adolescents are vulnerable to mental health, especially going through drastic physical and psychological changes. A lot of them had already struggled with mental health problems such as depression and anxiety, but worsened after the outbreak of COVID-19. A study confirmed that under a COVID-19 pandemic situation, high psychological distress and anxiety can be seen among mainly two groups. Young people and people with low income. So with the two factors combined, university students confronting financial difficulties can seriously be exposed to mental illness. Since the pandemic has started, the cases of young people's suicides have been rapidly increasing. However, government suicide prevention campaigns mainly target employees of large companies. So young people without a full-time job can easily be disregarded from those campaigns. And not all universities are financially capable of providing mental health services. This also sheds light on another issue Japanese tertiary education faces, which is the scarcity of scholarships available to university students. Government scholarships have only started in 2018, and about 40% of university students still rely on student loans instead. With student poverty increasing during the pandemic, the reliance on student loans may have effects on students' mental health. So as a result, rather than enjoying them focusing on their university life, students worry, how will I support myself financially today and tomorrow? So what now? What kind of measures can there be taken to support university students in Japan? First, educational institutions can reduce tuition fees and offer more scholarships to cover the students' academic expenses. Universities could further involve themselves in arranging a rental service for electronic devices, setting up food banks, and so on. Second, normalizing open conversations about mental health in the university community will allow students to create uniformity in facing the economic losses caused by the pandemic, and students assure themselves that they are not alone in such financial battles. Ultimately, our goal is to protect any adolescent's educational opportunities. In the light of the global movement on achieving sustainable development goals by 2030, students have the right to be guaranteed the fourth goal, quality education. As the COVID-19 pandemic is taking a toll on students' income base and mental state, universities as well as governments should involve themselves more in protecting the student's academic life. With much emphasis on well-being and financial stability, students will be able to regain confidence in pursuing their dreams amidst the pandemic.